Dear members of the State Commission, dear colleagues, dear crew members, we are meeting today to approve the prime and backup crew composition of Soyuz TMA-14M. Earlier, the Главный meeting, the General Design Review, the Technical Committee, the Federal Space Agency and the State Commission have made a decision on the launch of Soyuz TMA-14M on September 26th with the international crew on board the spacecraft. And per our schedule, everything goes nominal and the rocket and the booster were prepared for the launch in full. And everything is reliable and of very high quality. With that, I would like to hear the report of the head of the Gagarin Cosmon Training Center, Mr. Yuri Lonchikov, on the readiness of the crew. Dear Oleg Nikolaevich, dear members of the State Commission, dear crew, in order to perform the space flight for the ISS-4142 program, the following crew members have been in training, the prime crew consisting of Alexander Samokotaev, so is vehicle commander, station flight engineer, Elena Sirova, so is flight engineer and ISS flight engineer, and Barry Wilmore, Soyuz flight engineer and ISS flight engineer, and the backup crew consisting of Gennady Padilka, Soyuz vehicle commander and ISS flight engineer, Mikhail Kornienko, Soyuz flight engineer and ISS flight engineer, and Scott Kelly, Soyuz and ISS flight engineer. All the crew members have passed their training in full. They have passed their qualification exams and completed the integrated simulations. And per the Chief Medical Commission finding, they are all deemed ready for the space mission. The Interagency Commission meeting on the crew readiness that took place at GCTC has reviewed the results of their training and made a decision that the crew members of ISS 4142 are ready for the mission on board the Soyuz TMA-14M and their mission on the Russian segment of the ISS. Pre-launch program has been completed in full. And based on everything I just said, I would like to propose uh, for the State Commission to confirm the following crew, consisting of the prime crew, Alexander Samukutaev, Soyuz Commander, ISS Flight Engineer, Elena Sirova, Soyuz and ISS Flight Engineer, and Barry Wilmore, Soyuz and ISS Flight Engineer, and the backup crew consisting of Gennady Padelka, Mikhail Kornienko and Scott Kelly. Thank you very much. I would like to give the word to hear the report of the head of the Center of Preparation of the Booster and the Rocket. I would like to report the following on September 23rd. All the work, all the activities were performed to prepare the first for the first launch day, and no issues were identified. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, folks. It's good to be here today. Uh, Yelena Alexander Butch, um, I'm looking forward to having you on orbit. Uh, it'll be a very, very busy time for you as you'll witness as you approach station and see all of the primary ports occupied by vehicles. The good news, it'll be easy to find your docking port. It's the only one open. But uh, you're going into an increment where you're going to be extremely busy. Uh, it should be exciting with uh, three EVAs early on uh, and another vehicle coming up, a progress, and, uh, and an orbital uh, vehicle. Um, so I just uh, caution you to uh, pace yourselves. So congratulations on completing your training. Uh, good luck and Godspeed. So the State Commission has decided to approve the composition of the crew of Soyuz TMA-14M, I mean the prime crew, consisting of Alexander Samukutai, Russian Space Agency, Soyuz Vehicle Commander, ISS Flight Engineer, Elena Sirova, Roscosmos, Soyuz and ISS Flight Engineer, Barry Wilmore, NASA, Soyuz and ISS Flight Engineer, and the backup crew. Gennady Padelka, Roscosmos, uh, Mikhail Kornienko, 
uh, Ross Cosmos Soyuz and ISS flight engineer and Scott Kelly, NASA Soyuz and ISS flight engineer. And second, to continue all the planned activities to prepare for the launch. Thank you very much. And can you say a couple of words, Alexander, please? Dear Mr. Chairman, dear members of the State Commission, of course, I'm absolutely sure that we will perform all the goals and all the um, work that has been assigned to our crew. And of course, I would like to say a special thank you to all of you for the trust. And um, I promise that we will perform everything in full. The crew is ready for the flight. Thank you very much. The launch for us is getting very close. It's very near. And I want to take this last opportunity to say a sincere thank you to everyone uh, preparing the vehicle, the, 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 the station, the, the rocket, the science, everything that we have before us, because this exciting moment for us uh, has arrived. So thank you all. As always, the State Commission has made the only right decision possible in this case. And during the whole training, we tried to support each other. And we were not uh, competitors, we were just friends. Thank you very much, everyone. The backup crew is ready for the flight in March 2015. Thank you, everyone. I only wanted to say thank you to the State Commission, and I'm ready to fly tomorrow or in six months. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone, dear friends, dear Alexander, Elena, Barry. From the bottom of my heart, I would like to congratulate you on your upcoming flight. And I'm absolutely sure that you will honorably perform all the tasks that were assigned to your crew. All the best and Godspeed. Dear colleagues, following the resolution of the State Commission, the composition of the prime crew was approved, consisting of Alexander Samukotayev, Ross Cosmos Cosmonaut, Soyuz Vehicle Commander and ISS Flight Engineer. The State Commission approved the Prime and the Backup Crew, the Prime Crew, Alexander Samokotayev, uh, Ross Cosmos. Engineer, Elena Elena flight Engineer, Elena Serova, Soyuz Flight Engineer and ISS Flight Engineer. Oh, do we need an English translation here? Let me check. Okay, everyone understands Russian. That's perfect. And Barry Wilmore, Soyuz flight engineer and ISS flight engineer. ISS 42 commander. Backup crew consisting of Soyuz commander Gennady Parilka and ISS flight engineer. Uh, 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 Soyuz and ISS flight engineer, ISS flight engineer, Scott Kelly, Scott Kelly, Soyuz flight engineer, and ISS flight engineer. The head of the GCTC would like to say a couple of introductory words. Yuri Lanchikov. I'll be standing right here. I have only a couple of words to say, and after that, you're very welcome to ask your questions to the crew. First of all, I want to say that the crew of ISS 4142 is very unique. Right, we are, right now we are planning to celebrate the International Tiger Day and the international organizations and the Roscosmos, the Russian Space Agency, are planning to perform a number of activities uh, because of the this particular and very special day. And as you can see, there are also toys that the Russian crew is planning to take with them. The Amur Tiger, its name is Amur, and the Far East uh, Tiger also. And dear friends, you are very welcome to ask your questions. 
But before we start our press conference, I would like to give the floor to Vladimir Leonov, the Minister of Sports of Tatarstan. Dear friends, I also have only a couple of words to say. Today is a wonderful day. Uh, we are going to have our press conference. And as you know, Russia, our native country, is holding a lot of sports events. And next year we are planning to host the World Aquatics Championship in Kazan. And prior to the launch, I would like to say a special thank you to Roscosmos. And on the rocket itself, you will be able to see the symbol of that upcoming championship. And we are also sending this capsule with water taken from the Kazanka River in Tatarstan to the station. So I really hope it will help us win that championship. Okay, first question, please. Rob Navius with NASA Television for uh, Butch Wilmore. Butch, I have two questions for you. Uh, for your first month on board, uh, you and your crewmates face uh, time-critical science research two more visiting vehicles coming up with cargo, three spacewalks. How do you intend to hit the ground running and maintain that high-speed pace for all of that period of time? That's an interesting question, Rob. Um, my first thought, went, as you were saying, it was sag zashagam, which in Russian is step by step. And I think that's the method in which that we will approach. And it is a busy, it is a busy time. The first month is really going to be hair on fire, if you will. Um, but we have been well trained, well, you know, all across the globe, and uh, we are ready to tackle what's put before us. And I don't think at this point that any of the three of us look at this as a lot of work ahead. We look at it as truly an exciting opportunity with a lot of different vehicles, as you mentioned, uh, spacewalks, working the robot arm, the science that's involved. It's an exciting time for the conglomeration of nations, and it's an exciting time for us. And uh, in December, while you're on orbit, uh, NASA and its industry partners will conduct the first test flight of the new Orion spacecraft. How significant is that test uh, in marking a transition to deep space exploration? How significant will it be for you personally to be aboard the station, which of course is seen as a waypoint uh, between Earth and deep space? I would say that we would agree that we feel like we are on the leading edge of human achievement in space as we launch. And to have the vantage point from which we'll have when Orion launches is scheduled in December right now, what a unique opportunity to see us as we take those baby steps that will eventually continue to take us further and further into the cosmos as we try to understand um, things that we don't even know now. Anastasia Lee, Gazeta Baikonur. Anastasia Liga, the Baikonur newspaper. My question is not of a professional, but more of a woman nature for Elena. Elena, you will be in space for almost six months. Your daughter is 10 years old, and in this age, it's really important for her to have her mother nearby, to share secrets, just to talk or to ask for advice. So here on Earth, it's very easy to do. Uh, you can simply go to a different room to talk in private, but how are you going to do that on, while you will be on the ISS? Thank you very much. Thank you for the question. I just have one correction for you. My daughter is not 10 years old anymore. She is almost 12. Oh, my apologies. And I wanted to say that we have a very good relationship with my daughter, and we discussed a lot of things with her, and we do have our own secrets. And I don't see anything that can impede our further close communication in space, because we have a lot of means of communication board the ISS, starting from the IP phone uh, to a weekly private family conference. So we have a lot of technical possibilities, opportunities to call my daughter, to ask how she is doing, to support her. And it's also very important that my that my whole family will be with my daughter while I'm in space. First of all, uh, my husband, her father, Mark Serov, my mother, my sister, all of them will be there for her, supporting her. 
хорошей поддержкой для And it will be great support for her. And of course, I will be calling her as frequently as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your question. Next question. Eric Berger with the Houston Chronicle. Uh, question for uh, Butch. Uh, what does it mean for you that your family has traveled about 7,000 miles uh, to be here with you and, uh, and to see your launch? And then have you had a chance since you've been here to spend any kind of special moments with your wife and children? Our hosts here in Baikonur have been very, very hospitable, and I want to thank them. I appreciate you asking that question. For the opportunity to bring family and friends here, we all have the opportunity in life to do things that we think are exciting and special, but how much more special it is when you can share those times with the ones you love. And that's what we've been able to do here, and it's been wonderful. Good afternoon, Oksana Prudnikova, Russian First TV channel. With a little bit over a day left to launch, what feelings do you have now? Do you have any worries or you simply can't wait till it happens? And my next question is, at what preparation stage are you now? Are you still in training, I mean the prime crew, or are you simply resting and recharging batteries? Thank you. Thank you for the question. Here at Baikonur, it's a little bit of everything. Of course, most of the time we are performing our pre-launch training. This is actually what it's called. The time we spent here at Baikonur is called pre-launch training. But of course, we have a lot of time to rest. Our schedule includes relaxing massage sessions, various events. I'm sorry, we were just discussing if we need an English translation of my answer. Okay, let's continue. In fact, we are fully ready to launch after passing our state examinations, after the official approval of the State Commission, and before we flew to Baikonur for pre-launch training. So now here, while we are here, most of our training time we spend on our spacecraft, on our Soyuz. We have so-called Soyuz uh, fit checks. So first check, fit check, second fit check, and tomorrow we will have the third fit check while we will be sitting in the Soyuz ready to launch. Thank you. Alexander is very nervous. I think I wanted to add a couple of words also. I wanted to add that all this time we had a very tight and busy schedule. And as you know, cosmonauts are people who take a whole lot of exams, but we were also preparing for our main exam. And this time, space will be the examiner. Elena, I have one more follow-up question. For you personally, why did you decide to fly? fly? Um, my flight is my job. Thank you. Uh, Rob Navy is NASA Television again. I have a question for Scott Kelly. Uh, Scott, uh, the next time uh, you come back here, you and uh, Mikhail Kornienko will be just days away from leaving the planet for a full year. That will be the longest mission by humans in almost two decades. Have you thought at all, or what are your current thoughts about how you expect to pace yourself? Will it be like a marathon runner? And uh, how will you maintain a healthy state of mind during a mission of this length and magnitude? Thanks, Rob. Um, right now, most of our, our focus is on um, making sure we support the, the prime crew and helping them um, get ready and uh, be prepared to safely leave planet Earth here in uh, about uh, one day from now. But, you know, following their launch, you know, it's something I'm, I think Misha and I will give a lot more thought to. And um, I think, you know, pacing ourselves is the right thing. Uh, both of us have flown a long duration space flight before, which is good because we, we recognize, and I think we learned from that how we will have to have a slightly uh, different pace than we previously had, almost um, like Bush said, just taking things step by step, but, but definitely going slower, I think, than, than we both uh, did last time, and I'm, I'm speaking for him. Um, but I, I, I'm guessing he probably feels the same way, just, just uh, having a much uh, slower, steady pace to get us through the flight. 
and I think uh, what's going to be really important is uh, the support from people on Earth, um, uh, our friends, family, coworkers, uh, supporting us, talking through us through email and and the uh, IP phone and and things like that. I think will be really helpful in in getting us through that uh, long flight. Thank you very much in your questions. Natalia Burtseva, Roscosmos. First of all, congratulations, Prime Crew, on your approval by the State Commission. We love you very much and wish you a successful flight. Elena, special wishes for you. Have you noticed our T-shirts? Thank you. That's, that's simply awesome. We love you very much and we wish all your dreams come true professionally and personally. But I have a question for the backup crew and I have apologized. I have to apologize here. I wanted to ask Scott and Mikhail about the biomedical experiments that will be conducted during their one-year mission. What will be your main focus area? I heard there will be an experiment on the water balance, since that's very important in microgravity. How will you check and monitor blood pressure? That's another very important focus area. And what about your vision experiments? And I have one more question for Gennady. What's the current handover plan uh, for you? I know you will be coming back to Earth in September. Who will return with you in the same spacecraft? Natalia, you asked so many questions all at once. I'm afraid I'll start answering and forget something. As far as the experiments are concerned, it's a very good question. I have seven fluid shift experiments. I think Scott has more. Can you move the microphone closer, please? Yes, the fluid shift experiments are very important. And from the time of my last one year, of the last one year mission, this research area has advanced a lot, and the results of this experiment will allow us to fly further beyond the low Earth orbit. It will help make sure that cosmonauts will feel good in space. It's not the only experiment that we are going to have. We also have vision experiments. I don't think we have enough time here to describe all the experiments in detail. What was the next question? I just wanted to add a lot of these experiments are, they're, they're, they're co-investigators both on the Russian side and the US side. So a lot of the experiments uh, that are NASA experiments, Misha is participating and vice versa. And did you have a question for me? Uh, yes, we will launch in March, and here now we are as a backup crew. As far as the landing is concerned, uh, let's wait for the official announcement from Roscosmos since the final decision has not been made yet. More questions, please. Ilya Petrenko, Ilya Petrenko, Russia Today TV channel. Hello, everyone. I have a question, or rather a proposal, for all three crew members. As usual, we will be broadcasting live your launch, and we would like to give you an opportunity to say a few words that will be broadcast a few seconds after the lift liftoff. So, what would you like to say? Is it a new exam for us? I don't understand you. Give us the respective procedures and we'll run it. Okay, so, as a rule, after the insertion, our reports to the ground are very precise and they are the following. Everything is nominal and the crew feels good. Thank you very much. More questions? Thank you, Evgenia Dudnikova, Korolov City TV station. 
First of all, it's great to see all of you. I'm here. I can't come closer. My question is, first of all, for the Prime crew and Alexander Samkotev in particular. A six-month flight can be compared with a marathon, and you need to pace your work well. And based on your experience, at which moment in time does it become psychologically difficult, and who can help you with that? Well, six months is really a challenge, and Elena Sorova will fly with you as well. And uh, taking into consideration this minor detail, um, how will you monitor the psychological climate in your crew? I understand your question, thank you, and the thing is that we don't have any statistics on which day, week, the psychological climate becomes unbearable. We were trained to work with each other for a long period of time, and the crew is very good and very well trained. And from the psychological perspective, we don't have any issues, and the most important thing that some issues might arise even on the first day of the flight when we stand near the rocket, for example. But first of all, we need to respect each other, compromise, to be able to perform all of our goals. We won't be able to work together if we behave otherwise. And uh, we have to report to our family, to our ground team, to our colleagues. And I'm sure that our crew will have no issues, absolutely, and I'm sure just like during my first flight uh, when we had an absolutely amazing team, amazing people, uh, we have no issues during the flight. We shall respect and compromise. That's all. Thank you. Good afternoon. I have a couple of questions, two questions in particular. One question is for everyone. Well, all of you know that there is a capsule with water taken from the Kazanka River as a symbol of the upcoming World Aquatics Championship next year in Kazan. So what do you think about this capsule, about this symbol, about the championship? And my second question is to Elena. You are the first woman cosmonaut in 17 years. So what are you going what are you expecting from that flight? Are you going to take makeup with you? Um, thank you very much. Okay, I will answer the first question about this unique capsule. I think it's already has it's already a tradition to send some sports symbols to the orbit. You remember the torch that was taken to the station during the Winter Olympics? And then we returned the torch, and uh, we even had an EVA with that torch. We are not planning to do the same thing with this capsule. However, we can only welcome this decision that was taken by your committee, by Roscosmos, to take this capsule to the station as a symbol of this wonderful championship. Uh, this capsule will be returned by Maxim Surayev and his crew. The volume of this water is a little bit over one liter that was taken from the Kazanka River, as you said. Kazanka is not a, simply a river, but it is also a river that can give additional energy, additional force and power to our athletes to achieve all their goals during the upcoming World Aquatics Championship in Kazan next year. Of course, we will be supporting our athletes during this championship, and we like different types of sport, and of course, we will be actively involved in that. Alexander? I think I said Tatarstan. I don't said Kazakhstan. Oh, maybe it's just a slip of my tongue. Sorry. My apologies. And the second question, I would also like to add to what Alexander said. I want to say that um, physical training is an essential part of our training as cosmonauts. And swimming is also part of that training. 
I would like to wish good luck to all of our athletes. Okay, answering the second part of your questions about women cosmonauts, I would like to make a cor correction here. Elena Kondakova was the first Russian cosmonaut, woman cosmonaut, who was in space. But I will be the first Russian woman who will be on the ISS. I think I feel the same thing as uh, all other crew members. It's a huge responsibility. We are excited. We would like to say a special thank you to all people who supported us, who trained us, who built our rocket. And I want to say that we will do our best. Thank you. So, okay, so can you tell me more about your maybe everyday life on the station, how you see it, for example, your hair, how are you planning to do your hair? And I have a question for you. Why don't you ask uh, the question about the Alexander's hair, for example? I'm sorry, this is my answer. Thank you. More questions? Dear friends, Alexander, Elena Barry, the Aviation School of Ulyanovsk welcomes you. And here I am. I'm not alone. I'm with my friends, my colleagues, and uh, my colleagues from this aviation school asked me to say uh, congratulations to all of you. And they have a question, will you be able to come to our aviation school next year? And our uh, women? Our colleagues also asked Elena to join Alexander while visiting our aviation school. Uh, yes, thank you so much for your question. I really appreciate it. I'm al always very happy to talk to you, to your colleagues. I'm a pilot myself, and I would really like to see um, the new students of that school, what training methods you're using. I do promise you that next year, I don't have a date yet, but next year I will uh, definitely come to your school and talk to your students. And I can add also a couple of words, and I hope Alexander will not be against that. I will be happy to join him during this trip. Thank you. Next question. Zotov Mikhail, organizing committee of the World Aquatics Championship on behalf of Kazan, the Republic of Tatarstan, we would like to invite all of you to our city, the city that will host the World Aquatics Championship. And we will send the official request, or rather an invitation, to Roscosmos, and good luck to all of you. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, and please also send an invitation for Max Arrive. All right, this completes our press conference. Let's say thank you to all our wonderful crew members. And now let's take a picture.